So I've been a Windows user for over 15 years as it's been the backbone of both my personal and work life. If you're watching this, you probably feel the same way, or at least you did until recently. Now, I still use a Windows laptop for work and it's reliable and I'm very comfortable with it, but I've decided to make a change for my personal computing needs and switch to Mac OS. This wasn't an easy decision and it's been a bit of a journey, but that's precisely why I wanted to share some tips and tricks that have helped me transition more smoothly and hopefully they'll help you too. To be clear, my goal isn't to recreate a Windows experience on a Mac. I mean, these are fundamentally different systems and there's value in that but I do want to make the adjustment period as smooth as possible for anyone else out there who just made the switch or might be considering a switch. So today I'm going to share what I've learned, just practical advice that's worked for me. So first let's talk about the dock, which is this taskbar or menu that you see at the bottom of my screen. I found that automatically hiding and showing the dock declutters your workspace. You can find this in system settings by going into the Apple logo here on the top left clicking on system settings, going into the desktop and dock menu and looking for the toggle called automatically hide and show the dock. This will automatically hide the dock and show it when you drag your mouse to the bottom of your screen. I find this keeps the screen very clean and really helps me stay focused on whatever application I am working on at the moment. Also, on this same menu, I tend, I tend to turn off these show suggested and recent apps in dock Again, in the spirit of keeping my dock very clean and very organized. Keeping your dock organized is very crucial to your experience in macOS, so get ready of any apps that you don't use often by right-clicking on the application, going into options, and clicking the remove from dock option. Now, if you don't know how to right-click on your new Mac, simply press your trackpad with two fingers, and that is the same as a right-click with a mouse. Also, know that you can click and drag around applications to your desired order. So make sure you spend at least a few minutes organizing your dock, cleaning it to make sure it helps you stay focused while working on your new Mac. Next, and something you will be using quite a lot is Spotlight Search. Just hit Command and Spacebar on your keyboard and type away. It's really fast and surprisingly very powerful. This can help you look for applications, documents, web searches, even dictionary searches. You can search through your emails, um, images for specific things that match your uh, search query or other um, tips for your Mac. So make sure you learn how to use this command spacebar or control spacebar if you're using an, an external keyboard um, to really bring up and make use of this functionality. It's really going to become your favorite way of opening up applications or documents in your Mac. Next, let's move on to Finder, which is the equivalent of File Explorer on Windows. And here there are a few things that I recommend doing as soon as you get your new Mac. So if you cannot find Finder, you'll find it here on this uh, icon with the smiley faces. And once you open that up, then you'll notice that it has a similar kind of structure as that of a file explorer on Windows. The first thing that I recommend doing is um, playing around here with your favorites. So you can drag and drop them in any order that you wish, and you can even remove them um, from the sidebar if you need to. So make sure you keep the things that you will be using the most often here under your favorites. Next, I want you to head on over to the view um, menu here at the top and I want to enable show path bar. This will really just show the um, file path of your folders. So that gives you just a better idea of your current folder structure. And I also want to enable, enable the status bar which just tells you how many items are in the current folder that you are in and how much space you have available um, in said folder or in your disk overall. Next two things, I've never really got used to the way File Explorer displays icons and files. So what I like doing is I either always have it as a list view, which has your folders and then any full so any subfolders kind of indented or indented to the right. Um, depending on how deep you're going or how many folders you have or files within that. Or I either like that view or the column view, which is a similar uh, view, but instead of displaying the subfolders underneath, they are displayed to on a column to the right side, as you can see here. So inside my YouTube folder, I have two uh, folders and then inside the default folder, 
these are the files that I can find um, within that. So either the view as columns or view as list are my preferred um, options when trying to keep my file explorer organized. So one thing that caught me off guard, especially when using a mouse with a scroll wheel, was the scrolling direction as it's opposite of Windows. On macOS, scrolling down actually moves the page up, which is fine and actually very intuitive when using the trackpad included in my MacBook Pro. But when I use a Mac in my current office setup, which has a mouse and an external keyboard, it makes it very confusing when using the uh, scroll wheel, especially as I am switching very often be between my Windows work laptop and now my personal uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, for this, I found a free app called Scroll Reverser. I'll leave the link in the description and it's been very, very helpful to kind of get me back to what I'm used to. What I really like about this app is that it lets you choose when you want to reverse the scrolling direction. Meaning if I go up here and click in the options, preferences of Scroll Reverser, I can see here that I can enable Scroll Reverser. reverser. I can select which... Um, Kind of scrolling directions I want to reverse. So I want to reverse both the vertical and horizontal directions. But what I do like the most is that I can select when I want to do this. So I only want to do this when I'm using a mouse, meaning this program will only reverse the scrolling direction or the default scrolling direction in macOS when it detects that a mouse is being connected to my MacBook Pro. If there is no mouse present, then I'll simply uh, stay with the current default scrolling directions in the Mac, which again, when I use the trackpad, they're very intuitive and I don't have an issue with them. It's just when I'm using a mouse that I find it kind of confusing. So definitely give this application a try. I've also enabled it so that every time I log in into my Mac, this runs automatically and checks to, to see whether or not I'm using a mouse. So this is almost now seamless for me. I don't even have to worry about it. It's always um, on the background. And if I do use a mouse, then the scrolling reversal um, will be enabled automatically. So the last thing I want to talk about are my struggles with using my MacBook Pro with my two um, external displays um, in a dock setup that I have. So normally for my uh, office setup, I have two external monitors and they are both going from an HDMI output to a display port into a Lenovo ThinkPad. I think it's the generation two um, USB-C dock or docking station. And then that uses a USB-C cable to plug into my Windows laptop. So I can close my Windows laptop, plug it in using that USB-C cable, and I can use then both displays um, for my work. Now I was hoping that the same setup will work with my MacBook Pro as I do have a MacBook Pro M3 with the Pro chip uh, and that does support two external displays from what I've read. Uh, but I just couldn't for some reason get it to work. So every time I used that same setup with the USB-C cable, it recognized both of the external displays as only one display, meaning I it would mirror the same image in both displays when I really wanted to have um, separate displays uh, on each of the uh, external monitors. So to fix this right now, I am running that USB-C cable to the Mac, but in addition, I am running an additional HDMI to HDMI cable from one of the monitors directly into the Mac. So I'm bypassing the dock completely for that second monitor. And this way I can have my MacBook Pro closed and docked somewhere on the side, and now I am able to use both um, external displays or external monitors. I've read online that a lot of people have struggled uh, with this setup. I think you need a special Thunderbolt 4, if I'm not mistaken, dock um, for the displays to work kind of intuitively with your Macs, but I have been able to get around this issue and use the same dock that I use for my Windows um, setup. So. I know that can get quite confusing, especially because I'm not physically showing it. So if you have any questions on how my setup looks like right now, I can definitely answer them in the comments. So these are some steps I've taken to make this transition smoother from customizing the dock to using Finder efficiently. These adjustments have made a big difference in how I work. Of course, I'm still learning and I know it's a continuous process, but it feels more natural every day to use um, my new MacBook Pro. 
I genuinely want to hear about your experiences. If you've made the switch or are considering it, leave a comment below. I'd love to learn from you too. Let me know any apps or configurations you've discovered. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more uh, videos like this one. Thank you for joining me in this journey and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.